All right, listen to me very closely. I know that every single one of you is probably dying to get a tour of this insanely cool RV, but I'm gonna make you wait until the end of the video. When we get to the end of the video, I will show you this thing inside and out, upside and down, but you can't fast forward to the end. You gotta watch me try my hardest to create this cinematic masterpiece of driving this home from Indiana. So wait till the end and we'll see you there. All right, good morning guys. It is about 7 a.m. Saturday morning, and today you're getting a solo vlog. Very, very, very rarely will you see me traveling uh, by myself, but every once in a while, I just need to kind of hit the open road, get a break, uh, decompress. So today I'm flying out to Elkhart, Indiana, the Dynamax headquarters, pick up my new motorhome. And I'm gonna take you guys along for the journey. So keep in mind, I'll be the one that's doing all of the filming. So I'm the one that's responsible for slowing down, getting the GoPro shots, getting all the cool artsy cinematic stuff that you're used to seeing in our videos. The truth is, there's probably not gonna be a lot of artsy cinematic stuff. Probably just gonna be me being really excited about picking up a new motorhome, which I'm very excited about. So anyways, at the airport, ready to rock and roll, flying to Chicago, grabbing a car, driving down to Elkhart, Indiana, and then uh, we'll be hitting the road. So, let's go. So I just landed here in Chicago. Um, turns out there's no great way to get into Elkhart, Indiana, because it's a small town. And so Chicago is actually the closest airport with the best flights for me. Um, so it's about a two hour drive uh, to Elkhart, to the Dynamax plant to pick up the RV. Now, I want to talk to you guys about a pet peeve that I've got, and it's rental cars. See, I just picked up the rental car, got a Chrysler 300, I believe. I've never driven one, it's actually kind of nice. Um, but man, do any of you guys know rental car hacks? It's like the one thing that I just haven't figured out yet because I really haven't spent a ton of time on it, but I should because we travel so much. It's like every time we rent a car, somehow, someway we choose the one line that's the longest. Uh, you saw the clip of the budget line. And so I ended up like changing my reservation in line and booking a new one with Avis because there was no line. So I got out of their way faster, but that was a somewhat pleasant experience, you know, no major issues, but I swear every time we rent a car, there's always this problem of you show up and they either don't have the car that you uh, reserved or they don't have any cars at all, or the agent just is in a bad mood and doesn't want to work with you. And then you see some of these other travelers that go up to like the express lane and they like swipe their card and boom, a car shows up. So how come nobody's done a car vending machine? I know Carvana did one to like sell cars, but let's be honest, I don't think like buying a car from a vending machine. I don't know how many people are gonna do that, which is probably why that company is bankrupt or like they're on the verge of bankrupt bankruptcy, they're going out of business. So drop a comment below and let me know uh, what you think about that because I would sure love a better solution. We are on the road to uh, South Bend, Indiana, where we're gonna drop off the rental car. And then from there, I'll have to catch an Uber over to um, Elkhart. After that, we'll be in the RV and uh, headed westbound. I am here in Elkhart, Indiana, which believe it or not, this region right here is kind of like the RV and trailer capital, probably of the world. All the big manufacturers are here or near here, and that's where everything's assembled. So you can see this is the Dynamax factory right here. And you guys ready for this? You're not ready for this. This might be one of the best looking RVs I've ever seen in my entire life. Boom. Look at that. Ram 5500 cabin chassis with the Isada 5, which is like a 30 something foot uh, camper body on it. And my friends here at Dynamax went way above and beyond on this build for me by adding the liquid spring suspension. Guys, liquid spring suspension is probably one of the greatest, best, most like innovative products I've ever come across in my entire life. And it's this right here. Basically it gets rid of all of the coil springs, leaf springs, all the old like junky suspension components that make trucks ride really rough and it replaces everything with hydraulic shocks which are load leveling uh, my buddy carl owns that company and they uh 
they're killing it. We put their kit on my service truck and I'm probably gonna start putting on a lot more stuff because it literally makes one of these medium duty trucks ride like an F-150. They ride so, so good, it's a Cadillac. So this right here, 2023 Dynamax Isada 5. Now you guys are gonna probably wonder why they built it to look like, I don't even know if I should say the name, I'm gonna go ahead and say it just because I need to draw a comparison, but Earth Roamer, for example, right? Earth Roamer is kind of the only other, um, well, the kind of the OG of expedition, you know, style campers like this, but they're more for like overland. They're not so much like luxury family, you know, they are nice, but this one is designed by a company that builds RVs for families. And I've had a Dynamax before and the bunk bed situation, all the stuff that we've had in my, my past ones, just awesome. So now I've got this right here. So it's capable, you can go off road. It rides well, got tons of space, tons of sleeping room, um, and it's got the Cummins motor. So obviously it's got trailer hitch right there. So you can pull whatever you want. I think my last Dynamax, which was the model bigger than this on a Freightliner chassis, was rated to tow up to 20,000 pounds, something like that. It was either 10 or 20, it, it pulled a lot. So this truck is brand new. You can see custom upholstery, which is actually super plush, super nice, and standard Ram dash right there it's got i believe the buck stop fenders on it which i love it's got the buck stop front bumper buck stop does really nice stuff the f550 f450 ram 4500 ram 5500 chevy kodiak uh, the medium duty truck market is uh it's kind of a it's a world that was kind of forgotten for a long time by different manufacturers and stuff because they didn't think that people were going to turn these things into like adventure vehicles but now that they're turning into adventure vehicles it's becoming more and more popular to make parts for them. So I've been playing with these medium duty trucks for a long time. Uh, we've built our own wheels and tires for them because it has a unique uh, bolt pattern. I believe it's a 10 on 220. So it's like a small big rig pattern. But if you look in here and I'll give you guys a full tour here a little bit later, but cause I gotta get on the road. But this is a slide out right here. You got your upper bunk right here. So you can sleep two people here. You got TV for them, pass through to the cab. You've got the theater seating, which is sweet, which I believe that turns into a bed. You've got the dinette that folds down and turns into a bed. You got a full-size fridge there. You got the master bedroom, which obviously has a huge bed in it and that's the whole thing slides out. So when I get a second, guys, I'll pop this thing apart, put the slide outs out for you and show you the whole thing. Um, but like I said, I gotta get on the road right now. It's very rare that something exceeds my expectations. Like I had high, high standards and high hopes for what this thing would be. And it's already just completely like exceeded everything. So super grateful for the guys at Dynamax and uh, you know, the, the company here, it's just, uh, they've been a great partner of mine. They understand who we are and what we do and what we need our vehicles to do, which is why they decided to just go all out by making this thing super sweet about 20 hour drive ahead of me thank you dynamax and uh, thank you guys for joining this video here we go Good morning. It is Sunday morning, and uh, I was gonna give you guys like this 
ultra sexy like montage of me folding this thing out and getting ready to take a nap or get some sleep last night. But instead I got stubborn and I was like, nah, I'm gonna drive through, I'm gonna make it. And then around 5 a.m. I was like, no, I should probably stop because I need to get some sleep while it's still dark outside rather than trying to take a nap during the middle of the day when it's light, I'm gonna sleep as well. So I ended up pulling over. One thing I love about traveling uh, in a truck with like a sleeper or a camper is finding cool rest areas or little nooks and crannies where I can like pull off and like sleep on the side of the highway in a cool spot. Last night was not one of those nights. Last night I slept in like an industrial park behind the building, so bad idea. Forgot to set the cameras. I forgot to show you the sleeping arrangements. This is my bedroom right here, master bedroom. I tricked it out with a couple of uh, truck stop blankets, which are actually very comfortable. And so a couple of hours sleeping on the side of the road. Now I'm here at the truck stop this morning at Zap Bros. Just fueled up. This thing is getting actually great mileage um, for how big it is. It's getting close to eight or nine. I am speed rated or speed limited right now because these tires, these Continentals, are only rated for 68 miles an hour. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I get back is get rid of those and put the Goodyear G275s on it, which is the same tires we just put on our big heavy rescue service truck. And my buddy Daniel Little over at DBL Design, who's kind of a godfather of all things medium duty, he's got a 20. So those are rated to 81 miles an hour, so they'll get much faster. Currently in, where am I? Grand Island, Nebraska, or just outside Grand Island. About a 12 hour drive home from here. Onward with the journey we go. Yeah, you guys like that shot? Who needs a GoPro when you got hands <laughs> and a phone? <laughs> uh, just by myself for the last 12 hours, so I'm a little delirious. If you guys want to chat, now's the time to do it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's talk about the nitty gritty details of what exactly this RV is. It's produced by Dynamax Corp. Dynamax Corp is a manufacturer of Class C style motorhomes. Class C means it's got like a, a truck body, right? It's got the long hood, whether it's a Freightliner, or a Dodge, or a Ford, that's what they're basically uh, specializing in. It's different from like a Class A motorhome. A Class A motorhome is like the big flat nose. Now, the reason why I like the Class C over the Class A is because, well, this one comes with four-wheel drive. They're way more maneuverable. I like the look of a truck better Better than just a big block. So this is a 2023 Dynamax Isada 5 30 FW with the Explorer and one of a kind, only one in existence right now, Extreme Package. Now, this right here was built by the factory at Dynamax, okay? So this isn't, I haven't done anything to this yet. I'm going to, I'm gonna do all sorts of modifications, but if you bought one of these from Dynamax, this is the way that it would roll out of their showroom, delivered to you, which is pretty insane considering all of the modifications and just how capable this truck is. So they start with the 2023 Ram 5500 SLT, which is, it's the most loaded medium duty truck I've ever seen in my life. It's obviously got the 6.7 liter Cummins. I think it's uh, 360 horsepower, somewhere around 800 foot pounds of torque. And then it's got all the creature comforts. It's got these big plush like leather seats. They're heated, they're power. It's got dynamic cruise control. It's got brake assist systems. It's got a big panel uh, screen here. It's got tow haul mode. It's got the extra battery so you can like momentarily hook the coach batteries and the truck batteries together. It's got a killer sound system. It's got a camera right here with uh, four different cameras. So two in the back and then one on each side. So four different angles, so no blind spots. Dynamax and Ram did a really good job on putting this package together. Uh, you can buy the SLT package, you know, from any you know, Ram dealer, but when you combine it with all of the other features that Dynamax decided to cook up, dude, I'm telling you, like before we get too crazy on the inside, let's just walk around the outside and I'll show you some of the stuff. So the Extreme package is different from their standard Isada uh, 5 package in a few different ways. One, it's got liquid spring suspension. Liquid spring suspension is 
probably my favorite new product in the automotive space ever. And that's saying something because I've seen a lot of cool stuff. But what it does, it gets rid of the really stiff coil springs in the front and the really, really stiff leaf springs that come in the rear of these medium duty trucks and replaces it with basically a hydraulic cylinder. That hydraulic cylinder then runs to accumulators and then they came up with this special liquid that can actually be compressed. So your shock dampening and absorbing rather than just being metal on metal is all liquid. And I'm telling you right now, it is the best riding and best driving truck, even all the way down to F-150s and Raptors. This thing beats them all. I just drove it 16, 1800 miles across the country. So I got a pretty good idea. Another cool thing about the liquid spring is it has three driving modes. It's got sport, normal, and comfort. And that basically goes from really, really soft and cushy to, you know, uh, pretty firm and stable and aggressive, but not harsh and not bumpy. I drove home and tried out the different settings and they all make a big difference. I like the sport setting because when I'm going down really steep canyons and, uh, you know, these, we got a lot of big mountain passes here on the West Coast. So once I got out of the Midwest and started getting to some of these big hills with big turns, I put on sport mode and it helped some of that body roll a little bit. It didn't feel like this whole thing was just swaying all over the place, which is one thing I hate about RVs and that fixed the problem. Uh, they also swapped the dually tires for big super singles. This one's running the Continental uh, MPTs, which I've had a lot of experience with these tires. I like them, don't love them. And the reason for that is they're narrow and they are speed limited. So they have a 68 mile an hour speed rating. And you gotta follow that pretty religiously, especially if you're running close to the max weight capacity because uh, they will blow out if you get going significantly faster. So I'm gonna swap the tires out for the Goodyear G275, which is my favorite medium duty tire in the world. It's the same height, same rim size, but I think they're roughly two inches wider. I love them. And once I prove that they work really well, I think Dynamax is gonna start using them as well, simply because they have an 81 mile an hour speed rating. So you get an additional, you know, what is that? 13 miles an hour, which is a big deal when you're cruising on the highway. It's got the buck stop uh, super single wheels, which are direct bolt on, so no adapters. It's got the buck stop big beefy front bumper, which has a spot for a mile marker winch, which I'm gonna put in there. It's got the buck stop front fender flares. These right here, they look like they came from the factory. That gives you that extra coverage. So you're not, uh, you know, shooting rocks and stuff all over your RV and you're not getting mud flap tickets. So those are the main differences between the extreme package and just, you know, the base model. Another really, really cool thing I love about Dynamax is this is all paint matched. So the truck, the body, all the components have a really, really solid, like high-end paint job on them. You can see it's two-tone. It's got like this mountain scheme. This isn't vinyl wraps. This is all paint. The body is also all aluminum. So it's basically uh, laminated foam with aluminum panels. So no wood anywhere on the construction of like the body and the main you know frame of it which is a big deal because wood is not great in fact this is one of the quietest least rattly rvs i've ever driven there's just so much storage it's got a big cummins 8000 watt generator there so obviously it's got tons of storage underneath this has dual 220 amp alternators so you're never going to run out of power never going to run out of juice they even concealed like your depth tank stashed it right in there so it's out of the way and you're not worried about it. Here's some of the cameras that you'll see on them, four of those. It has two slide outs. You got your big main living room slide out and then you've got your master bedroom slide out and they are just the right size. They use the space really well. Another really important thing for me is the ability to pull trailers with my RV. This has got a 10,000 pound hitch on it and I'm not gonna tell you to haul more than that but I will tell you that I have hauled more than that and it doesn't even care especially since the liquid spring suspension is designed to have load leveling so you put a heavy trailer on there the sensors say oh we're sagging a little bit and it increases the pressure back there and gets you you know a level truck so you're not sitting there dragging the explorer package also has significantly more solar panels up on the roof it has better insulation for cold climate so i can take this thing out in the snow and not you know worry obviously you got to check your pipes and stuff like that to make sure you're not letting that stuff freeze but it's more resistant to cold and freezing temperature right now i've got the suspension on the highest ride height setting and it will go down i believe it's roughly six inches so it'll really squat down as you guys probably know i've been a ford kind of a f550 guy for the last five or six I think seven years i've been kind of dead set on the 550. recently i've started dabbling in the rams in my opinion that cummins has better highway drivability you're running you know anywhere between 1500 to 1800 rpms 
kind of no matter where you go, even on steep hills, pulling heavy loads, that, that Cummins engine has a way better torque curve down low. And so it's pretty uncommon to see these things up to like 3000 RPM. I tracked the fuel mileage on the way home and I think my average mile per gallon was around eight. And I think I could probably stretch that closer to like 11 or 12 if I really kind of just babied it. It's got four hydraulic stabilizer jacks. Pull up to the campsite, push one button and boom, it, it stabilizes for you, levels everything out and you're not having to worry about like, is that one level, is that one level? Everything's handled just for you. Hey, you got uh, we snacks? Already, no, we already got Girl Scout cookies. Thank you though. Girl Scout cookies. Best line you can think of. Right there, four Dakota lithium batteries, which are really nice batteries. These batteries are designed to be able to be used all the way down to like almost zero volts and then charge back up. They like those big cycles of, of use all the power and then charge it slowly and get it back in there. So this compartment right here is insulated because you got your exhaust coming through right here. So you're not gonna have problems with the exhaust overheating this box. It's just little things like that that Dynamax did a really good job thinking about and you know preventing problems. You've got your outdoor TV. Now this is like a 32 inch TV with the Bluetooth soundbar outlets, water heater and, and exhaust and stuff right here. You've got access to your water heater chimney. The steps that automatically, I'll show you. Open the door, they open, close the door. See you later. Another thing I love about it is door code. Just like the new Ford trucks and stuff, boom, 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 put your code in. You're not worried about carrying your keys around all over the place. It's got these big awnings with LED lights. And one thing I love about these awnings is they've got motion sensor activation. So if the wind gets too crazy or if I start driving for it to put it up, they sense it, boom, they put themselves away and you're not gonna rip them off. Things you have to take into consideration while you know traveling in an RV is how comfortable is it to drive down the road with the slides put away? And not just for the driver and passenger, but if you have kids and family back here, do these have seat belts? Yes, seat belt, seat belt, seat belt, seat belt. So you got tons of belts. These are the theater recliner seats. This is an option because they also have just a couch that folds out into a bed. The theater recliner seats are really, really comfortable because they got heat, they got massagers, they lean way back. So passengers are gonna be super comfortable sitting in there. This is my kid's favorite place up here, the, the loft, the bunk bed over the cab. In my old Dynamax, when we would go on trips, my kids would sleep in the um, bunk beds. But then when I would go on trips with guys for work, I would have a couple of like grown adults sleeping up here comfortably. You got your TV up here. Another thing they did was they thought of usb chargers pretty much everywhere everywhere you turn in this thing there's a usb charger usb charger this coach actually does have the wind guard in motion satellite so you can get direct tv or you know whatever cable and stuff while you're driving down the road so it already comes with that on the roof that's one of the options that i got it's got your bluetooth soundbar here which can play your phone or can play whatever show you're watching and then it used the kitchen space really well so it's got these covers right here over the sink that you can just basically uh you know put back on when you're when you're not in the kitchen and you can use it for storage and stuff like that you got your garbage right there you've got an additional folding table right there that pops up so it gives you more space for you know counter space preparing food or whatever I mean, everything is just kind of really smooth and all the components are really well built full-size microwave good size range stove top got all kinds of storage space under here You've got your main panel right here, which I'll show you. This controls pretty much everything in the coach. You've got your lights. So when it's bedtime, you can turn the lights off in the bedrooms by individual switches, or you can come right here and go boom, light master off, or you go light master on. Do I want day mode? Boom, I got day mode. Do I want to set the front mood? Do I want to set the rear mood? Or you can go to night mode where it'll turn it all off. But that's not the only thing. You go back over here to the screen and check this out. We're looking at my power. So right now I'm not plugged into shore power and my generator is not running. So the solar panels on the roof, which it has a lot of big solar panels, they're providing all my power. But let's say I want to run the AC or the microwave. We hit the generator, hold it for a second. Now you should hear this thing fire up. Boom. 8,000 watt generator, diesel power pulls from the main truck tank. So you don't have to worry about separate uh, fuel tanks or worrying about filling different things. And now with that generator, I can run the AC units, I can run the microwave, I can run pretty much everything in here without overloading it. Another cool thing is you can do auto generator start. So if the battery gets below a certain percentage, it'll automatically kick the generator on for you so you don't have to worry about it. And then it'll automatically shut off. You hear the AC kick on as soon as the generator starts rolling. So if you're doing a lot of dry camping, generator is the way to go. Or if you're going, you know, traveling in the summertime and the heat of the summer, AC up in the truck area works really well, but 
it's hard to start cooling the whole back if you got passengers riding back here. So we run the generators, we're cruising down the freeway, turn the AC on or the heater or whatever. It works really well. This also shows you, um, it's got your climate control, so it can choose uh, the tank compartment to make sure that that stays heated. Uh, I can choose the rear AC or the front AC and heat, have different climates for each area. You got full control of all your lighting. You've got control of your slide out switches. It shows you which one's uh, extended, what's retracted. It also, you can retract and extend your awning. You can also control your leveling from here, which is really cool. Boom. So this thing right here, this panel, this is what Dynamax has done a really good job. The user interface, and I've used this on all of my Dynamax motorhomes, and it's been pretty much the same. They just keep on making it a little bit better each time around. Shows you your fresh water, gray water, black water, propane capacity. You can turn your water pumps on. Everything's just done right here. So there's not a ton of different switches, which I really, really like. Another thing they did is they put a big old fridge in here. This bad boy is like not your standard mom and pop RV fridge. Like this is a, a good size unit. And this right here is probably my favorite thing about the entire coach. It's so simple. It's just a little block right there that keeps your door from opening when you're doing turns and stuff like that. Nothing drives me crazier than driving an RV down the road and having cabinets open and stuff flip and fall all over the place. No, they've got it covered right there. The dinette, well, it folds into a bed. So you drop this down, you fold these out and you've got a full uh, you know, two kids can sleep there easily or one, one adult, no problem. And you got full privacy because you got, boom. So slide down shades on every single window. At first I wasn't sure if I liked this bathroom layout because it just felt like it was using a lot of space. But at the same time, I've been in RVs where I shower and I'm like bunked against the walls and no room. It's got a huge shower, tons of space. You got your bathroom here, you got your vanity and your sink over here. And it's a, it's a bathroom that you can share with people, right? So it's not just for the owners of the RV and it's not just for the master bedroom. If you're at camp and someone needs to use your restroom, they can use this without being, you know, all up in your business too much. Uh, then you've got your master bedroom. Master bedroom is, it's a kind of a unique layout and a little different than the ones I'm used to seeing. Typically on a master bedroom on an RV, it's the beds against the back wall and the whole back of the coach is basically master bedroom. Well, on this one, like I said, they ran the bathroom parallel to it. So you've got bathroom here, which makes the master a little bit smaller, but I would rather, I mean, you don't need a ton of room in here. This is the only thing I don't love is the space right here between, oh, you know what? I think I just fixed it. <laughs> I was feeling like it was a little bit tight there, but the mattress was slid down. Um, the mattress also folds up for when the slide out comes in. So bam, you just fold that up. You got a huge closet, tons of space in there. This is the small slide out, another TV. So I believe this is TV number three, lots of entertainment options. And then you need some privacy from the kids or whoever. Boom. And you know, a lot of people will upgrade these to like a actual solid closing door. If you wanted like, you know, not have sound and stuff come through here and wake you up. Curtain will be just fine for us. But guys, I'm telling you, this is as far as usable space and just the best overall option for like a family to cruise in or a retired couple or a single person whoever it is this is in my opinion one of the best and most well-rounded floor pans out there if you're not going to be using the upper bunk and you want to be able to have a little bit more headroom you got headroom for days so you can get down in here easily get down to the driver's seat and the passenger seat keep in mind there's probably a lot of stuff that i overlooked like how big the water tanks are and how much you know capacity the solar panels are you can click the link in my description below it's going to take you straight to the dynamax website and they'll show you all those details this unit is not available to per you can buy the isada 5 right now but if you want the extreme version which has the lift the liquid spring suspension the big super single wheels and tires like identical to this you're going to be looking at kind of the first part of 2024 like i said i'm a bit of the guinea pig we're testing this thing for the next few months making sure we get all the bugs worked out and make sure that it's perfect so that when you guys buy this boom you got it and nice thing is the pricing on this is going to be it'll be less than 400 000, um probably high threes 
but if you were to go try to buy something equivalent from earth roamer or some of these other expedition camper companies you're going to be a million or two easily so the price point is perfect for somebody who wants to get a very off-road capable basically borderline full overland rig but with very good highway manners for a fraction of the cost so that's why I decided to go step away from the Dynamax DX3, which is a bigger class C on a Freightliner chassis with the bunk beds. Step down to this because that big RV, we we're having a hard time getting into some tight places. Whereas this, I can take this anywhere pretty much my UTV will go. Um, now I'm not gonna go take this thing off-roading like crazy because I don't wanna ding up the body and stuff like that, but I have the ability to go way more places in this unit than any RV I've ever owned before without being just like a full blown like truck bed camper that doesn't have any of these creature comforts. So you will see some changes over the next, you know, weeks, few months as I change out the wheels and tires, maybe put some different like a Ram Air hood, some different like small components here and there to make it feel more like mine. But what you see right now is exactly the way that it's gonna come from Dynamax. This is it, this is, this. it's kind of crazy to think that this is an OEM vehicle because it looks highly custom. It's got sharper turning radius than like an F-150. So this thing will literally turn on a dime even though it's, what, 35 feet long overall, something like that. So I know that not everybody's in the market for, you know, a $385,000 RV, but I know that some of you are. And I know that there's a lot of rental businesses that are looking for cool stuff to add to their fleet. So even if you can't afford to go buy one of these, hopefully your local rental company will put a couple in their fleet and you'll be able to take them out and enjoy it just like me and my family are going to. I just wanna give a huge shout out to Dynamax. They've been a great partner of mine for a long time. And uh, we have such a great relationship that they come to me and ask for my insight and advice when they come to build something that guys like me are gonna buy. So that's pretty cool. Not a lot of RV companies do that. Big shout out to Buckstop, uh, Bumpers, Buckstop. They came up with the wheels and the fenders and the bumper and they have really specialized in that f450 and the medium duty ram 45 and 5500 truck market and they build stuff that a lot of people don't build so and then liquid spring suspension my buddy carl over there carl you're the man you know who you are you know what you've done and you know how excited i am about it so thank you for that thank you dynamax more importantly thank you every single one of you for watching and supporting the channel and for all the love now with that said go take a nap